come on to a live. So if you catch on replay, it's a live. I've got cat fluff on my face. I've got a little friend just here. Say hello, Lily. She's a nightmare. And I'm, I'm painting with red. As you can see, I'm painting red. And I'm a bit concerned that she's gonna, she's a white cat and she's gonna jump into red and it's just, it's so highly pigmented red. So she's gonna be a Christmas cat. Oh, I don't know, Lil. Anyway, so I'm on live here. I don't do lives here very often. It's, it's new to me. I think I've said that before, but I'm here. Um, I started a project and it's a flat finish. And I put the, I put in the title, why would I do a flat finish? There's lots of reasons. Hello, you. I'm just going to turn so you can see how much she pesters me um, along the way. So I'm going to talk to you and then you can see her pestering me. Right, I'm not going to ignore her. So, yeah, I'm painting a flat finish. Why would I do that? Um, and I've started the project and I've got to do the lid of this project. I don't know if I actually put anything on YouTube regarding this piece of furniture. Um, I'm now going to turn because she'll, she'll go out in the garden now. So this is a monk's bench. Um, it's in two halves because I've, when I received it, the hinge of the lid was broken. You can probably, you can only just see in there, this is the lid, but it was kind of, the, the screw had broken and it was scratchy. This belongs up here, like so and it pivots to make a bench. I originally was going to lose the beautiful lines at the end and just keep this as a blanket box and then um, on another platform everyone said please don't and I think people are quite emotive about pieces of furniture like this in different countries because they don't see this type of furniture this is not an antique. I would never paint an antique. This is, it's old, it's got age to it. It's somewhere between 1930s and 1940s. It's a reproduction of something that looks quite old. And it has had um, a nasty coat of, I don't know if you can see, the light gloss paint. Somebody's put black gloss paint on this, which kind of does make it look very Jacobean. And I think that's what the style of the furniture is meant to look. So somebody's put gloss paint on it and then one end was stripped. If you go over to one of my other platforms, you will see how it looked before. It was looking mighty sorry for itself. So um, with, all, with all that said, there is lots of things with this piece of furniture that were, I was gonna originally strip this top piece of wood. Right, I'm gonna come closer now so you can see a little bit of the top one. This is the first coat. Um, so, I don't know this, I'm going to really reach you over. So, you maybe here and here, I don't know if you can see this, here and here and here, veneer, that's pinged off. So, it's had, it, if I tried to sand this back because it was so thick, I would have had a load of other issues. There might have been some nice wood underneath, I don't know. But generally, when there's veneer, there's a, a less of a grade of wood underneath. So that wasn't coming back to wood. So the only thing for me to do was either, well, it could have been dipped and stripped, take it off that way, hours, I mean, it was thick. So I figure a piece like this with lots of detail, like all of these details, um, you can have a little bit of fun with it. And a flat color is probably gonna be more impactful with a piece of furniture like this. Um, and because it's kind of shapely, I'm going to move you again over here. Um, because it's kind of shapely and it's got these details, sadly, a lot of the details have been painted out um, over the time. You know, with the gloss paint, it's kind of so thick, it's painted them out. So they're lost and gone forever. Um, but there's still a lot of shape in it. And I could do all sorts of my... Um, faded grandeur sort of looks on this, of course I could, um, but I tend to like to take the planar pieces and add the character in. Things that have got great shape and character like this can look amazing with just one flat coat and that's my take on it. That is just how I feel about a piece of furniture like this um, and I, 
I am keeping it as a monk's bench. I think this would be great in a hallway in the UK. I, I will pop it on one of my local selling sites and somebody will fall in love with this. Um, so it can be used as a bench to put your shoes on and your shoes can go inside. I think it's such a useful piece of storage and the flap can come down and you can display something on it. It's, it's kind of a useful piece of furniture. Equally, I think it would look great with this pop of colour on it. I think it would look really great in a child's bedroom. So, um, children's in a children's bedroom, this sort of shapely piece of furniture with a bold hit of colour would work really well. So I'm thinking about the market and its new life in its new shade of colour. So constantly, you have these other issues, and I've, of course, what also that's triggered my colour choice, which is red. It's not just to do with the fact that I'm wearing ears and it's Christmas and, and I've got a red scarf on. It's because it's a strong colour and I've had to sand where somebody started to strip this on one end and there was lots of grainy paint stripping black gloss glooping off. So I've had, I've had to sand this piece of furniture on one end to try and smooth that off and it's come down to the wood and the veneer and all of the other stuff and I just know that if I was to try and paint this white or a soft colour, it would kick back so many other issues. So I've gone for a strong colour to make life easier on me. I think it, it speaks volumes for the piece of furniture. It was dark, so a dark colour kind of works on this style of furniture. Many reasons. So uh, I can see there's people jumped on. So if anybody wants to ask me any question, I am gonna paint uh, the top now and um, you can see Stay with me. I know this, this will be in replay, so I, I try to answer nearly every question that comes through to my um, Anyone that wants to ask me any questions about the piece of furniture and why and, you know, what the colour is. I can tell you what the colour is. This is chalk paint. It's Annie Sloan. It's a mix. I have gone with all of the reds I've got in there. Burgundy and Primer Red. They're proud about 50-50 mix. And then there's just a little tad of um, uh, of Empress Silk, which is kind of a yellow-based sort of um, red. So it's just to pep it up and get that brightness because I think the only other treatment that this is going to get is a little bit of dark wax. Just into the details, bring back the sort of the details on the lion's faces and knock it back a little bit just into all of those crevices to add a bit of dimension and a little bit of dimension. Anyhow, right, I'm going to tuck my scarf into my, into here, and I'm going to paint away so I don't dip my scarf in. I may do a, oh, have I put paint on my face? No. I may jump back later and do a second live on this, so um, as we're nearing the finish, maybe not on the second coat, I'll just paint it so we get a flat finish, and maybe do it on the finish. Wax and then do the dark waxing. So you can see what detail comes back on the piece. I think that might be quite nice, a bit more interesting than just seeing a flat coat of paint. But I, I wanted to put this out onto um, a live on the YouTube. So it will generate questions in the, once it's up there and with all the other videos. So whoever stumbles across it might ask a question. We can all read through the questions and we may learn something together. That's the whole pur purpose, I suppose. So, yeah, I have had, I think I maybe talked about this on a different platform, um, talked about painting over certain pieces of furniture. And that's why in different countries we have certain pieces of furniture. Um, and in the UK, this is so regularly available, like, we can pick these up really cheap at charity shops. Like, the, actually, in fact, this one came to me for free. A friend of ours just gives it because it's not loved as much. And although it looks like an antique, we have pieces of furniture like that where they absolutely look as if I'm painting over something that's 16th century, and I'm not. This is um, a reproduction, and I'm sure in other countries, Many people would love to have a piece of furniture like this, as I do when I see beautiful pieces of French furniture. I kind of think, ooh, I'd love to have one of them and paint them. Um, so, yeah, no, I've not 
pound a an ancient antique. This is just something that we get an awful lot of. So don't panic. But I'm painting over something that's so beautiful. Hopefully it'll be just as beautiful once it's got this new coat on. I can see people watching. I wonder who it is watching. I see five of you watching. Say hi. Say hi. This is um this is a new place for me. I need to feel comfortable. I want to know who's there watching. See if anyone's brave enough to say hello. Or you'll all tune out probably because you'll be frightened to say hello. I don't mind. Whoever's there, that's nice. I'm not painting alone. Um, also, I've got a lovely new brush today. This is a brand new Annie Sloan brush. And it, the bristles are really long and lovely, which is great for a detailed piece like this. You can just wiggle the brush. It will get into all of the nooks and crannies without any effort at all. Um, I love a brand new brush. Also, the main body has had its first scrub coat. It'll probably, it might go on with just another coat and that'll be it. Um, it might just go on with two coats. I've mixed up enough. Um, one thing that I like to do, the back of this piece of venture is really good. Um, it's just got stain on it, the original finish. Um, no paint on the back. I've left that. I don't intend to leave it as is. I will recycle whatever the paint's left. So if there's only a small amount left, I will water it down and do a colour wash on the back. If there's plenty left, I'll just go there. So it's my fail safe, because I could always put a different colour on the back. So when mixing colours up, you never have an idea, not unless you really, I'm gonna come up now and speak to the camera properly. Not unless you really measure things out, and I don't, because that's the way I am. I think to be creative is just to pile the colours in, and I did do that. Um, this colour is a, a complete um, Jonathan mix. It's not um, a shade that I've ever used before. So I just like to mix a little bit extra. And if I run out, um, which I won't do, absolutely. Hi from Germany. Love your work. Thank you. Hi, Germany. So if I, I won't run out because I've mixed plenty up. But what I've done is left the back, so I can use that as my fail safe. So whatever's left gets used on the back. So that's a little technique for you, it's what I do. Because um, I have, red's quite highly pigmented. It might take two to two and a half coats. You know, so like another full coat after this one, and then, um, and then, then again, half again, you know, just touching up. It's quite cold in the workshop. As you can see, that's why I'm wearing my hat today. And I've got the door open because for some reason, the connection's poor when I don't have the door open. Um, and I'm on 3G, so if it jumps out, I do apologise. Right, that'll do for now. I can spin this over because it'll just rest on, rest on there. Oh, there's seven of you now. It builds up, it's slow, it's slow for me here. Um, on my other platforms, I have an awful lot of you that follow, which is lovely. So I have a lot more, a lot more um, interaction, but I don't mind. It's kind of private, but this is here for everyone to watch later, because I will, I will never delete the live from here. I'll just keep it as it is. And then, if there's anything useful within it, people can ask away. I'm just, I'm hoping the cat doesn't come in because she will jump on this table. She's known to jump on the table. Don't want a red cat for Christmas. Right, I'll get this coat on. You can see the, the oh, I've just picked it up with my hand. That wasn't good, wasn't it? Put my hand underneath. You forget, don't you? This has to be good on both sides because ultimately it's seen from both sides because it lifts up, pivots up. So first coat doesn't really matter. I'm gonna, it, it is going to be any what way because of the textural 
thick gloopy gloss paint that somebody put on this. I don't know why. Maybe it was done a long time ago before we had these wonderful paints that we now use like chalk paints. And there's something more forgiving about chalk paint. That non-sheeny, you know, that sort of part sheen that you get with chalk paint obviously is matte and then when you put your wax on, which I, I would always use rather than it's my go-to, you get that lovely sort of soft lustre, don't you, with chalk paint and I think that is, it's non-reflective, it kind of, certainly with a piece like this that's had so many anomalies, like this paint stripping on the side, you know, I've had to sand it um, and, you know, I don't want real high sheen because it's gonna it's gonna showcase all of the the badness <laughs> that has been done to it over the time. So that lovely that lovely sort of soft sheen is enough with the chalk paint. If I wanted to go for a much more flat, shiny finish, I don't think it would look as nice. I've got something flying over the workshop. That's really strange. I can hear something like a little, it's one of those little paragliders. I can hear it. making sure that I'm wiggling the brush in just to make sure there's no sort of like thickness, gloopiness in the corners because I don't want to create any more than that what was already created by the previous upcycle. So I'm just trying to make sure that there's no thick splodge in there. Um, the other bit's nearly dry. It's obviously it's really cold in here so it's taking its time to dry. Once that first coat goes on, it gets nice and grippy and I can go straight on with the next coat. Also, if you're not a chalk painter, you've never used Annie's paint, no prep whatsoever, just had a good clean. I did have to sand the end. I had to sand the end because somebody paint stripped it. So this, it was this end, the lion, it had paint strip on it and I think they realised straight away how difficult it was going to be and they stopped and I've had to kind of soften that off and just flatten it down a little bit, ready for chalk paint. So chalk paint for this project is absolutely the right product in my eyes because too many things going on with it, um, you know, with the finish. So it's gonna look a bright button when it's finished and very festive, I'm hoping. Anyhow, I am not gonna stay on any longer because I think it's enough. There's nothing exciting happening. It's just what I've had to say might generate some lovely questions in the future uh, that hopefully that will pick up and answer. So feel free, if you're watching this on a replay, to ask me anything about maybe what you've seen, what I'm doing here today, and why I would be painting it flat. Uh, I know, I'm probably covered a lot, lot of that off in this, actually. But there might be something else that I've not thought about, and I'm happy to answer away um, in any questions uh, in why I might paint this and a little bit more about the history of this piece if you want to know a little bit more about that and the whole debate about painting something that looks like a relic um, I find it quite interesting I think I mentioned on a previous live that I'd had a lovely debate with a lady and it was a Victorian piece of furniture that I was painting but again for lots of reasons I wouldn't have ordinarily painted something that I thought was uh, worthy of being fixed if you know what I'm saying I can do French polishing and maybe that's something that I will share. I think in the future to go back and, and showcase refinishing wood might be something that would really, I mean I'm not an expert at it but I am trained um, and I don't like it because it's such a long process and that's why I do the things that I like because it's quick results but I can do it so there is some, and I have fixed pieces of furniture that I still live with us in the house that are brown wood and I love them. I've got a Liberties of London upstairs that is, you know, it'll never be painted. It's, it's gonna be part of our life. I've got a grandfather clock that I've actually done some, um, some French polishing on, a fix on it. 
So, yeah, I can do that and maybe we'll find a nice piece of mahogany wood and fix it as well because there is a call for that as well. Anyway, I'm rambling, aren't I? <laughs> I'm going to try and tune out of here. Um, don't, um, don't be shy. Leave me some messages. Um, I do apologise for your attire. It is Christmas and if you're watching this in the summer, I know it's a bit strange, but it was Christmas when I shot this um, and it's really cold in the workshop. Can you see my breath? Maybe not. Anyway, lots of love. I'm going. Take care.